The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hyo Morita, the Lone Stranger eats again. Nothing's too quiet, stranger. Right, Pronto. Those bandits want our Marita white bread. Listen, cricket, stop. They've been frightened by the bandits? No, I step on him. Oh, well, it's up to us to get Marita through to all those hungry children for lunches and snacks, for all those men who like to sink their teeth into a hearty, hefty sandwich, and for all those women who want only the best white bread they can... Listen. Did the cricket start again? No, someone eating Marita. What do you mean? Why, stranger, are you eating Marita White Bread? Well, what good is that idea? Because your mouth full and big while you sleep, Marita Loaf is open. I can't help it, Pronto. I'll give you a silver bullet if you don't tell anyone. You don't want silver bullet. Me want Marita White Bread. Why, this is highway robbery. Well, that's the business we're in, stranger. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita! Away! With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! The town of Kimberley straddled the railroad tracks. North of Kimberley lay arid, lifeless badlands, and south the trees grew thick in a well-watered valley. It was here that the Lone Ranger and his nephew, Dan Reed, had made camp to await the arrival of Tonto. I expect Tonto will be here by sundown. We'll spend the night in camp, Dan, and start out at daybreak to visit your friends. If we're going to be here tonight, how about visiting Kimberley? Is there anything to see in town? No, not a thing. But there is one big building. I, I saw it from a distance. That was the railroad the warehouse. Is that empty now? I think the army has taken it over. As a warehouse, sir? That's what I've heard. Someone told Tonto the building was being used to store army goods. Golly, I'll be glad to see Tonto. How about riding out to meet him? <laughs> Getting impatient, Dan. Well, I thought since... We'd, we'd probably miss him. We don't know which route he'll take. He might take any one of three. Tonto, after visiting his friend Chief Thundercloud, was on his way to meet his masked friend and Dan Reed, and had chosen to ride through the desolate, unwatered badlands. There were hills and valleys and jagged rocks. As he rode south, he saw a cloud of alkali dust near a hillside on his right. On closer inspection, he saw a man riding a horse and dragging a huge bundle of brushwood tied to the end of a long rope. While he watched, the man and the brushwood disappeared inside a cave. Tonto was curious but he didn't suspect that the horsemen and the man who met him in the cave were killers. That confounded jug, that Indian saw you dusting out the wagon tracks. What's he doing in the Badlands, anyhow? How do I know? Look at him, Kent. He's riding over this way to investigate. Indian has more curiosity than any critter alive. What if he comes right up to the cave? We can't let him. If he rides into town and passes the word about seeing a cave loaded with army uniforms and rifles. Seems cold-blooded to shoot the redskin without giving him a chance. I'll get close to the mouth of the cave so I can rest my rifle on the rock. I'll wait to get closer so you're sure to get him. Just leave it to me. Be careful, Ken. Keep your head down. Da oh, oh, oh. gone it. He spotted you. He stopped his horse. Yeah. He suspects something. He's turned away from the cave. He's not coming any closer. Let him have it. 
Fire again, Ken. Fire again. I know I hit him. Sure you hit him. I saw him reel, but he's still in the saddle. Yeah, you missed. I saw the bullet kick up dirt ahead of him. Nah, no chance for another shot, Jug. He's got beyond those rocks. I know I hit you him. You hit him all right. I saw him slump forward. He was clinging to his horse for dear life. I just hope he doesn't live long enough to talk. We'll have to make sure, Jug. We'll get after him as soon as I saddle my horse. Tahoe had been hit hard. He fought desperately to stay in the saddle. Then he saw a fissure in a high wall, a place where he might hide. He turned Scout into the fissure. The paint horse halted inside. Tonto slid to the ground and fainted. When Kent and Jug had reached the point where Tonto had disappeared behind huge rocks, they found themselves surrounded by massive rock formations, larger than two-story houses. Kent, maybe he's gone all the way to town. Yeah, he might have. It'll soon be too dark to search. We better report to Carnival. Come on, let's go. Get him. Get him. Get him. Conable was a civilian in charge of the warehouse in which the government had stored vast quantities of army material, including blankets, clothing, and medical supplies, as well as rifles and ammunition. He lived alone in a small house directly across the tracks from the big warehouse. Soon after darkness, he heard horses stopping. I uh, wonder who's coming. Oh, well, Jug, is that you? Yeah, Kent's with me. We got to see you, boss. Well, come on in. We may be in for trouble. Go inside and sit down. I don't suppose you've seen an Indian riding into town on a paint horse. No, why? He came through the Badlands. Kent, the Badlands cover a lot of ground. Get to the point. He came past the cave. What did he see? First he saw Jug dusting out the wagon tracks. He saw me turn into the cave with my horse. What did you do? I shot him. You didn't kill him? I hit him, boss. I know that. Both me and Jug saw him slump over on his horse, but he got away. Did you look for him? Sure we did. I may have killed him. And you may not have killed him. We knew your search in the Badlands at daybreak. I'll keep my eyes open here in town. Sure. All right, boss. Later that same night, the Lone Ranger and Dan Reed had become increasingly concerned about Tonto. Something must have told the masked man that all was not well. Since sundown, the big white stallion Silver had been tense and restless. He had whinnied frequently and pawed the ground almost constantly. Finally, the Lone Ranger rose from his seat near the campfire and told Dan to saddle his horse. I'll have Victor saddled in just a minute. What if Tano comes while we're away? We'll leave a note telling him we'll be back here by tomorrow evening. If we return without finding Tonto, then our work will be cut out for us. We'll have to search the Badlands. Silver so sure is anxious to get started. Stay there, boy, steady. We're going in just a minute. I'm ready, sir. All right, empty your canteen on the fire. I'll fasten this note to a tree where Tonto will be sure to see it. Right. Let's go. Easy, Easy boy, Come on. During the darkness of a moonless night, Tonto regained consciousness and found himself practically helpless. His throat was hot and dry, and his tongue felt thick. He was too weak to stand alone, but Scout was at his side. Tonto somehow mustered the strength to gain his feet. He clung desperately to the pommel of his saddle. He rested for a moment, then placed one foot in a stirrup. Searing pain stabbed through his back, but he gritted his teeth and mounted. Then murmured to his horse, Scout. heard the gurgle of a running stream close by. More than anything else at that moment, he wanted water to cool his burning throat. He slid to the ground, but he couldn't find the strength to drag his body the remaining inches for the drink of water he so badly needed. (laughs) 
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. What are you doing, stranger? I'm baking up these flaky rich Morita brown and serve rolls, pronto. Them smell heap good, but no can do over open fire. Why not? It's a on package to bake in medium oven. Well, I made a medium fire. Uh, then it's okay, me. You guess right, Pronto. These Marita enriched brown and serve rolls bake up to a mouth-watering, flaky rich golden brown. The perfect hot rolls for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And they come freshly baked and piping hot from your fire in just six minutes. Uh, but good for family with many papooses. No, Pronto. The plural of papoose is papoosai. Uh, me may be no good in grammar, but you no good in making coffee. Yeah. Well, do you think it's easy chasing bandits all day and then slaving over a hot fire at night? Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita! Now to continue. Jug and Kent were on the move at daybreak, searching through the Badlands for Toto, dead or alive, and Scout. Later in the morning, the Lone Ranger and Dan Reed reached Gatesville some distance north. Dan went to town to inquire about Tonto. He had news to report when he returned to the gully where the masked man waited. Oh, ho, Victor, ho, boy, ho, steady, fella. Tonto was there, sir. I talked to several men who saw him. When was he in Gatesville, then? Yesterday morning. And he should have reached our camp near Kimberley last night, just as he'd planned. That's right, sir. If we don't find him, we'll have to search the Badlands. What? It'll be evening when we reach Kimberley. Yes, I know. That means if we do have to search the Badlands, we'll have to do it after dark. Yes, let's go. Come on, Vic! Come on, Connable waited on his porch across the tracks from the warehouse all day for word from his men that Tonto had been found dead or alive. Early evening found him pacing the floor of his living room with increasing impatience. Finally, he heard horses outside. He rushed to the window. Yeah, they're here at last. Well, what did you find? Speak up. What about the Indian? Is he dead or alive? We don't know. You don't know? We didn't find him. Didn't see hide nor hair of the critic. All right, keep looking. In the dark? Even in starlight, you'll be able to see a horse. Remember, his horse is somewhere in that valley. All right, boss. We'll keep searching. Hey, boss. What do you want, Jug? Someone just headed for the warehouse. I don't see anyone. Can't see him now. He just went behind it. Who was it? I couldn't be sure, boss. But the critter walked like old muskrat Peters. Now, who's he? He's an old trapper who lives in the woods. Traps muskrats and sells the skins. I had him working in the warehouse for a time. I fired him when I got my big idea to sell some of the army supplies. I wonder why he's snooping around the warehouse. He can't see through the windows, can he? No, they're all boarded up. And I'd better go over and see what he's up to. You boys come along. Followed by Jug and Kent, the warehouse supervisor crossed to the front of the warehouse. There he paused. Hey, boss, look. The door's open a crack. Uh, Peters must be inside. Well, someone's in there. I just saw a light. Confounded old snooper. I didn't know he kept a key to the lock. You boys get your guns ready. We'll have to deal with him. Do you think he suspects we've been taking out some of the store? I don't know. If he sees the empty cases, he'll know a lot of stuff is missing. His knowledge will do him no good. Keep quiet now. I'll open the door wider so we can see inside. There he is. Open near the candle. He's eyeing the empty cases. Get him up! Who is it? It's Carnival. Stand still and we'll shoot. Don't make a move, Peters. I want to talk to you. Come on, boys. Mr. Carnival, I, I didn't mean to make trouble. I came here because I wanted to help someone. But it's a good thing I did. I saw... Where'd him... you get the key? Well, I, I had it. I meant all along to return it, but I never seemed to get around to it. Put down your guns. You needn't hold guns on. Why are you snooping around? I, I didn't come to snoop. Uh, but look here, Mr. Conimal. Look what I found. A lot of stuff has been stolen from this here warehouse. Saints alive, there's a lot of empty cases. Why did you come here? Well, I I remembered that when I was working here, we, we had a lot of blankets and a lot of army medicine kits. I needed one of each. I didn't mean to steal, mind you. Only meant to borrow them until the poor redskin was better. Redskin? What redskin? Well, the feller I found in the woods near my shack. 
He was there this morning when I went to the bank of the creek to see about my muskrat traps. He'd been shot in the back. Ah, is that so? Yeah, he's in a bad way. I took him to my shack, and I've been trying to take care of him ever since. Did what I could, but I figured with one of the medicine kits I could do more. How did he get shot? I, I don't know. He's been unconscious ever since I found him. Did he have a horse? Yep. Fine one, too. Big, strong paint. Mr. Carnival, I'd say we don't need to do any more searching for a certain redskin. You say he's at your shack right now. Yes, sir. He's on my bunk. You know, it's times like this that make me wish we had a sawbones in Kimberly. Oh, uh, boys. I told you how we planned to set fire to this place when we had all the goods we intended to take. Well, sure. Yeah. Then the army can't inventory close enough to know anything was stolen. I think we'll set the fire right now. We have all the goods we can sell. A fire? Hey, you said all the goods you intended to take. All the goods you can sell. You mean you've been looting these army supplies? Smart, aren't you, Peters? Too bad you weren't smart enough to stay away from here. Carnival, you've been stealing government supplies. Grab him and tie him. Right. Let me go. Let me go. Yeah. Hold him. Let me go. Come on, here's a rope. No, no, let Despite me go. his struggles, oh. old muskrat yeah. Peters was quickly tied and gagged. Yeah. Helpless, he lay on the floor while the three men made their plans. Yeah. We'll leave him here with a key in his pocket. I'll tell how he threatened to get even with me for discharging him. Hey, that's smart, boys. People will think he started the fire out of spite. And then got trapped in his own fire. All right, pile some of the empty cases near the door. We'll light him. And then go to Peter's cabin and get rid of that Indian. Uh, we can blame his murder on Peter. You leave that to me. The Lone Ranger and Dan were nearing the end of their long trip. They came across the open flat country toward the old warehouse in the town of Kimberley. Golly, I sure hope we find Tano in camp. So do I, Dan. If we don't, then we'll search the Badlands? If we don't find him, you wait in camp. I'll try to search the Badlands alone. Oh, I could help, sir. Dan, look over there. The warehouse. Fire! Come on, Silver! Stop it! The great horse Silver, though tired from the long trip, found energy for a burst of speed that brought the masked man quickly to the rear of the warehouse. Oh, Silver, oh, he's just heading up. Without an instant's hesitation, the Lone Ranger leaped to the ground and rushed to the partially opened warehouse door. He threw it wide. The Lone Ranger saw a pile of empty wooden boxes burning just inside the door. The warehouse itself had not yet started to burn. There might be time to save it. Dan, give me a hand. All those boxes. The fire just started. If we throw them out, we'll save the warehouse. Right. Watch your hands. Use that army blanket. That one over there is starting the wall. I'll get it. Stand clear. Here it comes. The wall. I think I can beat it out. Get, get that one, Dan. I have it. We'll stop it. The fire must have started within the last five minutes. Carnival, Kent, and Jug made their way on foot through the woods toward the shack where Muskrat Peters lived. All three had guns ready, in case they found the Indian awake and able to defend himself. This is a longer walk than I figured. We should have brought our horses. And we're almost there. See the shack? Yeah. Light in the window. There's a horse tied to the tree near the door. Yeah, I see it. You dark to tell if it's a paint we saw. Well, it must be. Peters has no horse. What's the matter with you, Kent? Huh? Oh, I was just looking back toward town. Thought I might see the light of the burning warehouse. Couldn't see it from here. Maybe we should have stayed there to be sure the fire got started good. If it didn't, we'll start it again when we get back. Try the door, Jug. Right. We'll stand ready with guns. There he is. Awake. Well, quiet as death. Is that the red skin you saw? The same one, boss. See if you can find a knife. It'll make less noise than the bullet. Uh, no one would hear a bullet anyway. What people are in town will be watching the warehouse burn down. That place should go like tinder once it gets started. I said use a knife. Must be a knife in this drawer. Here's one. Yes, that'll do. I... I don't like this sort of work here. That engine's so still and, and helpless. Hurry and get it over with. All right, boss. Here goes. Hey, Let's go for guns and I'll shoot again. Oh, shoot anyway. That's Peter's voice. My arm's broke. I'll give him gun play. Oh. 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 bullets if you want, oh. sir. Oh, wait, wait, don't shoot. Oh. Drop your gun, Carnival. Oh. Peters. He said drop it. Oh, wait, listen. Peters told me everything on our way here, Carnival. Well, he lied. Oh. The evidence backed his word. He's masked. 
Peters, you're traveling with outlaws. I'm traveling with a man who put out the warehouse oh. fire before it got started and saved my life. Oh. Find some rope, Peters. Oh. We'll tie these men and hold them until Dan brings the law. In due time, Dan Weed came from Kimberly with a marshal who took the prisoners in custody and took a statement from old Muskrat Peters. It was several weeks later when Peters, seated on a chair in front of the warehouse door, saw Dan Reed approach and bring Victor to a halt. Oh, ho, Victor, ho, boy, steady. Well, Dan Reed, as I live and breathe. Oh, Mr. Peters, steady, boy. Marshal told me I'd find you here. Yes, sir, he, Dan. I'm in charge of the warehouse since Conable went to jail. Got the special appointment from the army. At, at House Tonto. Well, that's why I came here. He wanted me to tell you that he's as good as new, thanks to the care you gave him. Oh, that was nothing. Has the stolen stuff been brought back from that cave? Yep, it's all inside here right now. <laughs> Jug and Kent told plenty when they saw that the whole scheme had fallen through. Uh, say, how's that mask friend of yours? Oh, he sends his regards. Never to my dying day will I forget the way he saved my life. And the way he whipped out his guns and let it rip when those crooks were about to knife Tonto. And you know, Dan, if I live to be a hundred... I'll never forget the way his voice rang out when he rode away. A lot of people remember that, Mr. Peters. He's the Lone Ranger. Ah, the good old days. Back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Merida. Merida enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. Listen to the Lone Ranger. Keeping behind the buildings, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode toward the other end of town. As they passed an opening between two buildings, they saw Bob Allison standing in front of the hotel. Then as they reached the other end of town, they saw Edna Corey riding into Rimrock. She had already started up the main street when the masked man and Indian reined to a halt. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Edna Corey, Toto. She'll meet Bob Allison in front of the hotel. Ah. And what we do, Kimus, Abby? Maybe we can stop Corey before he reaches town. Let's go. Monsilver, I'm out. For a short distance, the Lone Ranger and Toto raced along the West Trail in hopes of meeting Hank Corey. As they started over a rise in the trail, the masked man called for a quick halt. Wait, Toto, hold, hold, hold. Oh, hold up, oh, Look, coming over that distant hill, a large dust cloud. That means a group of horsemen. Let's go into that arroyo to the left and hurry. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. I don't think they noticed us. They'll soon be passing here. I'm coming a long trail now, Kimasabi. Yes, I know. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.